do another abstract for you this time without any of the annoying music so <laughs> let's go I went uh, for a walk with my dogs this morning and just down to the lake which is quite close to us and it was just absolutely beautiful the sun was shining all the birds being spring here were flapping around and building nests and just generally having a good time lots of noises down there of the ducks squawking and I just wanted to possibly convey some of that in this painting there's lots of foliage down there lots of reeds and muddy sand with bits of shell in there and weeds and lots of seed pods and things like that so I've just added some water I'm just going to take a little bit of indigo to start with I really love indigo if you haven't got indigo you could use a Payne's grey possibly so just thinking now about the the water's edge now I am not actually painting anything in particular just shapes at this stage we'll just balance it out by putting some of that indigo over the other side as well adding lots of water want it to be fairly transparent and where there's hard edges I'm just going to soften them with some clear water this piece of paper is arches it's cold press 300 gsm and I've measured it nine inches by nine inches because I've got some frames with openings that are exactly eight inches square so that's the indigo on I'm going to just add a warmer blue just a little bit of ultramarine thinking about where the the reflections from the sky hit the water now you do know that I do like to see odd numbers around a painting when I say odd numbers you know one two three five and it just works you know by just and also just distributing the paint around the paper around the canvas uh, so that I've got a nice balance in the composition I want to add some earthy colors now so I'm going to go for a little bit of burnt sienna phone rang so it dried a little bit so I didn't dry it with a hairdryer but um, I just thought that I would just carry on I just want to get some nice organic marks thinking about the the shoreline down there the mud And again like I said you know just getting some of the same color just around around the artwork just using the side of my brush rather than like this I'm 
dropping some water in there. This is a little bit of Payne's Grey. Just want to add a little bit of contrast. Just using the tip of my brush. A little bit of a splatter I love how the Payne's grey mixes with the burnt sienna gives me that beautiful rich colour and just let that run nice organic feel to it and that's what I'm after now that is really really wet so what I'm going to do is just grab a tissue wherever they may be okay found it and I'm just going to dry off my brush and just suck some of that colour out. Works like a piece of blotting paper. We'll get a little bit of green in there. Going to mix some lemon yellow with a little bit of phthalo blue. That was a bit of phthalo blue. A little bit bright, so I'm going to just take a bit of the ultramarine, just send it back a little bit. Beautiful green. I'm going to use a little bit of clear water and just soften the edge. And I might soften some of these edges too. Let those run into each other. Looking so beautiful. Very delicate. Okay, I'm going to let that dry naturally, come back to you soon. 
Okay, the painting's all dry. It's time now to add some interesting details. I'm going to use some granulation medium and some ink. I've just got the ink in a little jar. It just makes it easier to access, but it's just a Winsor & Newton in a black. So first of all, I want to intensify some areas. I'm going to use a little bit of the quinacridone gold, which I used earlier. And this is working wet on dry. Right, bring that out of that area. And just some clean water. More clear water. Just softening the edges with the clean water. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of the ink. I'm going to use a smaller brush for that. And I don't need much of it. Ink is uh, very strong in colour. Very deeply toned. Now, I'm going to use the granulation medium. So just using a little pipette, sucking a little bit up. If you haven't got any of that, just to, if you haven't got the pipette, just use a, a brush and just add a couple of little drops of the granulation medium to the ink. And then we're going to just let it run. I'm just guiding it the way that I want it to go. Now that'll continue to granulate for a little while. Just want to soften up some more edges. Just touching into the ink here and there. Just leaving a little gap. Going to drop a little bit of that quinacridone gold into this area here. Okay, I just need to balance this composition a little bit by getting some darks over here. So this time I'm going to use a different technique of working wet on wet. So. Just using some clear water, making sure my brush is really clean and just adding some clear water just along here. I'm not um, pressing too hard into the surface because I definitely don't want to start moving the under, underneath layers around. Remember we use the 
Fellow turquoise earlier in this area around here. I'm going to do that again. And again, just tilting. Bring a little bit of that turquoise over to this side. Going to now again take a little bit of that granulation medium. And again a little bit of ink. Gives a really beautiful effect. I just need to get a bit of warmth down in that area too. So picking up again the quinacridone gold. Just touching into the wet paint and the granulation medium. Really liking the look of this one. I think I still need to, a little bit of balancing. So taking some of the quinacridone gold into this area here. Maybe we'll go a little bit bigger, join those two spaces up a little bit. Just going to lift out a bit of that um, excess water there by just using a dry brush and just letting it suck up. And I just want to make that a little bit stronger, so I'm just picking up a little bit more pigment. Dropping it into the place that I've already painted and it will just run where it's wet. Just dipping my brush into some granulation medium. Oh, you can hear my doggies, they're having a bit of a play time around my feet. So, shadow. Oh, two standard poodle, eight, 11 week old pups, decided to have a play date. Shh. I'm going to take a little bit of ink now and with this small brush. And while that granulates, I'm going to put the doggies outside. Okay, they're outside. Naughty things. Getting my smaller brush out. Okay, I just need to bring some more of that turquoise over, I think. So let's get that number 10 round. And get some of that thalo turquoise. Okay, up here I think some more colour. I might leave that space like an S going through. S's are always good in composition. But I think we'll do this another way. So I'm going to let this dry. I will put the hairdryer on it because I want these to run a little bit, I think. So 
I'm going to get the hair dryer and do that while you're watching. So what I'm doing, I'm using it on low speed and I'm trying to direct the way that I want the lines to go. I'm going to go on a bit of higher speed now. I'll just dry that off and with some hot air before I was using cold air so I'll dry that off and I'll come back to you I'm going to use some ink tense pencils I will try to remember to tell you the colors as I go this is teal green 1300 they're Derwent pencils and they're like a watercolor pencil but they're actually ink and once they dry they're permanent unlike watercolor pencils that will reconstitute reconstitu once they're um, wet again once they dry you know what i mean so you can know that when you're using these and they dry you can layer over them and they actually won't re um, open reopen they will stay where they are so i'm just trying to follow the line of this shape at the moment and i'm just using a small round brush i think it's an o yep it's an, just a leaf it's an acrylic brush it's not a natural fiber i like these just for detail work So I'm aiming for just highlighting these edges. And just trying to bring in some of the shapes that we have. Now I can also, while that's wet, I can bring in some watercolour. This is the quinacridone gold. Quinacridone gold deep. Just softening off. Still got that quinacridone gold on this brush. Just a little bit of clean water, just softening off.
so you can actually look at shapes within shapes and identify them and create little points of interest by doing what I just did there it's the same here I could go around that shape and I could leave it like that which I quite like or I could just again just use a little bit of that quinacridone gold and some water and just um, make it more interesting, which I quite like that. Okay, I think that we need to get some darks around here. So I'll find another ink tense pencil in a darker color. Now, I'm not sure what to use. This is a lovely warm gray here. So what I generally do with the intense pencils, you can't really rely on the colour here, so I find myself. So I like to try them out. This is Willow. So just using some clear water. Definitely too brown, so we'll pop that to one side. This one is let me see matter brown sorry about that it's very hard to see in the light and could be nice but um, not too sure about that one it's in the kind of toning um, pinkish toning I think this is ink Indian ink which is one of my favorites and it would certainly balance with the color over here and yeah a little bit gray maybe so let's try those two together we'll try the the matter brown along with the Indian ink and yes see that works doesn't it so let's go with that one so you can definitely mix intense pencils and they can really work well mixing them and um, applying them that way. So I've just sharpened the matter because it was quite blunt. So I'm going to go in with the matter first. Not pressing too hard. I find that on cold pressed paper, if you press too hard, you um, actually press into all the little indentations and you end up with kind of little speckles in there. So just using a little circular motion, going round and round. And then I'm gonna go with the Indian ink along the edge there. And just see what that does. Might bring a little bit in there later. So just using a brush, I'll just go with that small one again because we're just working in a smaller area. Just applying the clean water. Now remember, when you are working, once you've worked over here, you do gather um, colour on the tip of your brush. So if you don't want it quite as dark, just wash your brush or use that colour in another area.
a little bit of clean water again. Happy little accidents happen. Just soften that colour into this area here. Now, another thing you can do, of course, is uh, use a clean brush again. And you can soften up by bringing some of that colour out and joining up different areas. Just pick it up a little bit more because I'd like to see a little bit more just coming across there. Okay. I'm thinking I'm quite happy with this. I think that it just needs some final, a final focal point. So I'm going to dry this with a hairdryer off screen and come back to you with the final touches. So here we are back again. I decided to use the pencils and just starting with the same colours, the matter brown. I've just drawn on in just 2B pencil, I drew on some little birds that sweep around here. Thinking about the waterways around where I live. Get lots of these little swooping birds. So a very sharp, intense pencil. It's going around the outline and then just using the tip of the pencil. Don't press too hard, as I said before. And then I'm using the Indian ink. Mainly doing these colours on the front area of the birds. Nothing on the tail area. Okay, we're using again the small brush. Uh, make sure you don't get any blobs on there, so just blotting with a tissue first. Just adding carefully the water. Make sure you get that little beak in. These little brushes are so handy for doing details like this. Okay, 
so I just want to get a little bit of those colors into the painting with some splatters and using intense pencils we need to liquefy them so I'll show you how to do that so there's a couple of things you can do you can either I'll show you both ways you can either just use some water and flick see there little bit extra water the bigger sort of blobs that was the matter a little bit with this one too this is the ink color Indian ink Okay, there's another thing you can do is just taking a palette of some sort, a little plate, and just using some water, you can make yourself a little puddle. And you could definitely uh, mix those colours. get that lovely rich brown color that we had earlier so then we can just hit the brush with our hands And I believe this painting's done. So let's pop a mat on it and sign it and discuss closer looks at it. When you're taking masking tape off, always pull away from the artwork. That way you won't tear the paper. This is the finished work. Based on the waterways around my home. I've titled this one Migration. Thanks for watching.